topic that God has given us today is your identity in Christ. Your identity in Christ. And even maybe if I ask, who are you? If somebody asks you, who are you? If you want me to know you, I'm sure there are the things you start telling me. I am John Kamau. I come from Solai. I did for for what else? Yeah. yeah, there are many things you tell me about yes. Maybe I'm a boy. Maybe I'm a Christian. Maybe I'm quiet. So identity, we can identify yourself maybe the way we see you. Or the way people see you. Or that is the outward. That outward. If you think like um, even in the family, it has a way of identifying the citizens. Isn't it? What do they do? How do they identify their citizens? Even when you go to anywhere, you are known that you are a Kenyan citizen. What do they give us? ID. They give you an ID. And if you have your ID, my ID number is different from this. Your parents, I'm sure you don't have. The ID numbers are different from they are different for each one of us. And so even the government has a way of identifying their, their citizens. Even if you go to the US or wherever, you will be known you are Kenyan citizen. And therefore, if maybe we can say that identity it is a distinctive way. I think that there are distinctive qualities that make an individual unique. You become unique. That is it's a unique, distinctive quality that make us individual. How far now? Now we move to the the same. We have. Are you hearing me? I feel like I'm shouting so much. Am I shouting? Can you hear me if I talk like that? All right. Ah, uh, we have the uh, the the, uh, the fingerprint. If you look at the fingerprint of each one of us, does it look the same? No, and that's why you find that even the old people who, don't, who can't sign, even if they go to the bank, they use their, their fingerprint to identify them. So identification is very, very important. And knowing who you are helps you to succeed in whatever you are doing. One, it gives you confidence. Two, it gives you, at what you know, you have your identity. It gives you confidence. It gives you focus on what you are doing. So it is so important for us to know who we are. Now, when we come, uh, when we come to real you, actually, we don't know one another in the physical. Whatever I was explaining is in the physical. If you look at me today, when you look at me, you just see maybe a skin that is straight uh, stretch all over bones and muscles and, uh, and and that is maybe the body. But that is not me. The real me I'm inside. And you can't see me with the, uh, the naked eyes. I can't even either see you with my naked eyes. The Bible tells us that, that you are made in the likeness and the image of and God is a spirit, isn't it? So which means the real you it is the spirit in you. If somebody dies today, if maybe I drop here and God forbid, and I go, would I say my auntie, who you move at the end? I'm an end, see you. Me men are happy. But the body is still here, but we don't have any need. Which means you you as a person, it is not the body, it is the inside you. And that you when you die is the one that goes to the maker. The maker. And so that is what now we want in a few minutes to know the, the true identity. It is you in the spirit. And we can only get our true identity in Christ. Because Christ came from heaven, he came on earth, and he lived the kind of life we live so that we are able to identify with him. And when he was through, he went back to heaven. He left a blueprint for us where we are now able, as we walk through this life, we are able to identify with Christ so that when we are also through with this life, we also join him in, in glory. And therefore, with that one, we want us to see what is our identity in Christ. I want us to read Genesis 1. I think that one is an open. I read together. So that God, when he created man, 
He created each one of us in his image and likeness with a purpose to fulfill on us. And God had desired that when he created mankind, he lived in a certain way, enjoying the world, enjoying the fellowship with God, and that is why he created him in his own image. But somewhere along the way, something went wrong. That's what the call read Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make a man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 27, can you read all of us?